What up boys and welcome back to another video. So in this series I'm just doing uh, like a full run through of the dungeons that I would farm for gold or have farmed for gold in the past and I'm talking about how it should be done or how, how I'm doing it and also we're talking about what you could like potentially get from the dungeon. So instead of me just showing you guys what I received from like an X amount of runs Instead, we talk about like what could you possibly get? What is the best item from said dungeon? So, in this one, we're doing Stratholm, and Stratholm has two different sites. So you have the main entrance right here, and then you have the side entrance where you can enter right here. So normally, for gold farming um, and trying to get transmog, I would normally do the main entrance because it has more mobs. But I know that the majority of you guys watching and the people farming it in general tends to do the side entrance because the side entrance can uh, also give you a chance at the mount from the last boss. So I always tell people like if you need the mount or you don't have the mount just do the side entrance. The difference is not massive but uh, it definitely there's more in the main entrance but just because of that and I personally farmed the side entrance until I got the mount and uh, we're going to show you guys the uh, the side entrance. So before we dive into the video, I do want to mention that you guys can still pick up the Zero to 10 Million Gold Guide, a book that I made like half a year ago that takes you from Zero Gold and all the way down to 10 Million Gold. The uh, Using the techniques that I've used on multiple different realms, getting gold cap many, many times. And it's also a book that I'm going to keep on updating. So whenever a new expansion comes along, I'm not going to make uh, like a new book for let's say Shadowlands instead I'm just going to update the current book so everyone that has already bought the book will receive every single future update for free and then I also made one for uh, classic TBC a complete gold guy for classic TBC is already like 85 plus pages long so if you're planning on playing classic TBC you can find the link down below in the description so right now I'm just going to show you guys uh how I run the dungeon pretty much and I'm also going to do you guys a solid and I'm going to loot the mobs I know how much you guys appreciate when I loot the mobs when I do these test runs normally I wouldn't because I just want to show the route that I'm taking uh, and I don't really care that much about uh about the loot I have enough gold so I just normally I would just go ahead slay all the mobs and uh, that's it but it is very important to kill all the mobs inside the dungeon because it's not a it's not a very long dungeon. There's not that many mobs to kill in the uh, the side entrance. That is the service entrance. So make sure you kill all of them. And also, there's a couple of chest spawns that you should look out for, like behind these corner uh, groups of mobs next to these towers. There's going to be a potential like yes, chest spawns on every single one of them. And another very important thing is to make sure you kill all of the mobs inside these buildings. Uh, if you don't, the gates won't open up later on and you won't be able to continue with the dungeon. You gotta go all the way back and um, and kill the mobs. There's also a possible chest spawn like right here. So keep an eye open for that. And then you have a possible chest. There we go. It's actually up. As you guys can see, this one. So make sure you bring a tune that is either a rogue or any tune that has uh, a profession that allows you to open up chests. Like I'm using inscription with a scroll of unlocking so I can open up all the chests. But you can use like blacksmithing, engineering, um, even jewel crafting to open up the locked chests. So killing the boss and once again, making sure that we're killing all of the mobs inside. Right, now we're good. You're going to have this guy yelling at you. You can see it on the screen. Um, there's like a guy yelling whenever you kill all the mobs. Here we go. A couple of more. And then there's going to be a possible chest spawn, as I said, close to each one of those buildings that you have to enter and kill the mobs. So on this uh, pack right here, there could be a there could be a chest. Not this time around though. Killing the boss again, and this is the last building that you have to enter and kill these guys in. There we go. Now I always clear the uh, the left side 
here as well. Some people, they just go down here and uh, they don't clear the, uh, the other mobs. But if you play a druid, some people, they don't want to walk out. So they're going to... They're going to dream walk out and then dream walk back in again. And you're going to miss out on these mobs right here. But if you don't play a druid or any class that allows you to leave the dungeon fast, you're going to leave this way, this direction anyways. So you can take those mobs on the way out to try and be efficient. Killing that guy and his mini boss. And this is where the fun begins. Now we got to kill these big boys. So I usually, I don't usually mess around with looting him just yet. I just want to get him down. And then when they're all down, I can take some time to uh, to loot while uh, Rammstein spawns in. After killing him, there's going to be a bunch of skeletons coming through the gate. So you can take some more time to loot up all the mobs. Because they got to gather up and they're fairly slow. They don't have any loot, though, so just make sure you get them down. And once you've killed them all, you gotta go back into um, this building where the last boss is at. Kill this last pack, and then you're at Baron, which can drop the mount. So, hopefully, well, I already have it, though, but it would be cool if it dropped now. And it didn't. However, I, <coughs> I did get the, uh, the movement speed sword. This is good if you play, uh, well, any classic and use a sword. 10% movement speed on this one. So that's pretty cool. But that was it. So now you can either run out. It, the dungeon is not long, as you can see. So it's not, not a big problem just running out of the dungeon. Uh, but I'm a druid, so I use Dreamwalk. And then when I'm outside, I reset the dungeon by right-clicking my portrait. And then I would port back in. Like this uh, would allow me to uh, spawn just outside the dungeon. I could just walk back in. But now we're going to be talking about loot. And why would you farm Stratholm? That is a very good question. So the obvious is going to be the world drop items. It's the perfect level and it can drop you items like blue items, orb of deception, obviously. But then you also have epics like destiny, skull flame and uh, like cloud keeper like plates. And of course, if you're really lucky, you could get some kind of some epic BOE plan, right? But... The uh, reason why most people do farm Stratholm is that it has some green items like Elbaster and so on, but it's not a, it's not specifically good for green items. I don't like it for the green items. The only reason why I like Stratholm is because of the, the potential legacy items. It's one of those dungeons that has items that used to be unobtainable, but then later on uh, in like Legion or BFA, uh, the items became available again. So some website, even to this day, claims that some of these items are unobtainable, which usually means that the prices on them are going to be higher than what they would normally be if they were, like if people knew that they were still uh, obtainable. So one of the items, I will link all of these items down below in the description, by the way, so you guys can take a look at the names of them. But you have the Stratholm shoulders, these. These used to be a couple hundred thousand gold when it when they first became available again. Now they're down to 27k. And then you have the uh, two capes. They're usually 10k each. You have the gracious cape. And then you have the uh, Juno, Juno shadow at 12,000 gold. Then you have plague bats, fur gloves at 60,000 gold. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's... It, it's not much to brag about. These used to be a couple hundred thousand gold as well in uh, when they first became available. But now, there really isn't that much to it. And keep in mind that even if you do get these items, they don't look specifically cool. The people that will buy them are people who are collectors of old mocks, people doing like ATT. So they sell extremely slowly. It was worth the risk or the chance, the RNG hunt, when the items could possibly sell for a couple hundred thousand gold, which they did. But now when they're the same price as really high in demand Transmagar from, let's say, a Jinsu from Ulderman and so on. Uh, it I don't really consider Stratzone being worth farming uh, unless you like kind of collect mounts and you want to try and get the Baron Rivendell mount anyways, then sure, go ahead. Or if you just want to spice it up and if you don't make any gold, you don't really care. But definitely as a new farmer to Transmog Farming, 
just don't go and do strats home in hopes of making a lot of gold. It's not going to end well, really. But that was pretty much it for today's video. So as always, I would appreciate it if you guys uh, did press the thumbs up button. It really helps out my channel. Of course, only if you truly did like the video, though. But that's it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in tomorrow's video. Until then, bye-bye.